Ladies. Hello. Hello. Four done blondes. Kerry. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very well. Nicola, how are you? Hello. Nice to meet you. And this is Kate. Nice to meet you. And Rebecca. Good to meet you. Likewise. Good to see you. Now, you ladies think that you're good enough and talented enough and strong enough to work in a Ramsey kitchen, yes? Yeah. You've got a fully booked dining room. You are responsible for the starters, the main and the dessert. And we're going to be working as a team, yeah? Absolutely. Do not let me down. No, we won't. Yeah? We yeah. Won't. Right, stove's on. Get these lit straight away. <laughs> Nicola, what are you doing? I'm trying to light this and making a what? hash of it. You should know exactly how to light the fucking stove by now. No, we did before, but... Somehow. You did before. <laughs> Fuck me, we're in for a tough night, no? <laughs> right, ladies, yes? There's 12 tables out there. Yeah. And the first course is scrambled eggs. You're going to do one table each. On order, five couples, table six. Five scrambled eggs, five black bream, five gratin savion. Yes, yes, chef? Yes, chef. Right, Kerry, five scrambled eggs away. Okay. On order, four couples, table 11. Four scrambled egg, four black bream, four savion gratin. Yes, chef. Let's go, ladies, come on. Scrambled egg with wild mushroom is a delicious and easy starter. The brigade have been shown how to make it, and it's simple, but you have to concentrate. Start slicing your bread. How many are you doing there, Kate? Four. four. Yeah, Rebecca, I've I'm asked for four from you as well, but there's nothing on. Okay, didn't realise we were doing stuff simultaneous. Listen, ladies, ladies, the only way to do this is separate okay. tables. You're only cooking, on average, four Still portions of scrambled eggs each. Nothing more than that. Okay. Nicola, get your eggs on. But well, I thought I was doing the mushrooms. We're doing one oh, table yeah. each. OK. So Sorry. you've got five portions of scrambled egg. Four portions, five portions, four portions, four portions. Three in a frying pan, do and that's it. We're going to get so much to split this now. Yes. Excuse taste me. that, Kerry. And tell me the first thing, oh, thing you taste in your mouth. Quick. It's egg. It's burnt. You can't taste that's burnt. Yeah, I can. Get it in the bin. Let's go. Okay. Fine. Rebecca. Yeah. What is that? I know. I'm Rebecca, really. Rebecca, really no, 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 no. Let go. Because I yeah, no, let go. Sorry. Um. Really. I know. Okay. Sorry. Um. Get it in the bin and start again. So the brigade I've got actually think they can hack it. Ah, Kerry, Kate, Rebecca, and Nicola. I'm Rebecca. I have quite a lot of friends over for dinner, so I get lots of practice, but maybe more important to me is the aesthetics and perfection of the food. I'm Kerry. I'm incredibly enthusiastic about food. I make my own pasta, I make my own chocolate puddings, I make my own Thai green curry paste. My name's Nicola. I eat out quite a lot, so I know what food should be like, should taste like, should look like. I'm Kate. I'm a very good team player. I'm great at following recipes. I'm brilliant at following instructions, so I think that, given the challenge, I will live up to it. I think we're all very good at taking a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. We will really be pulling out all the stops and we will be so focused. We really like to test ourselves, don't we? So we like things to actually be quite hard, because when you come through the other side, you feel like you've really accomplished something. That's our mission. We want to be the best. We will be. We will be. We will be. We will be. <laughs> oh. Miss Kerry. Yes. Bring them here. They're burnt as well. Show me. Lift the pan up. What are we doing? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, ladies, ladies, Kerry. We've been cooking now for 20 minutes, yeah, and fuck all's happened. I'm not here for five hours, and all the customers, you know that. Before I met you guys, I at least thought that you could fucking cook scrambled eggs. Times four. Right now, we'll cook five more portions together, and then we follow suit again. Okay, yeah. So, scrambled egg with wild mushrooms. Garlic, shallots. Saute the shallots, and we get our mushrooms in, yes? This is a fantastic way to use wild mushrooms. The richness of the scrambled egg really sets off the earthy flavour of the mushrooms. Toast. I'm happy with that now. Been grilled, ready to roll. Mushrooms are working. Water's coming out of the mushroom. We're getting some colour on there. And more importantly, we're getting a bit of flavour on there, yes? I've got five portions of scrambled eggs to do, yes? Fifteen eggs. Roughly ten in there. Yeah, five in there. Knob of butter in each one, yes? And then start, off and on, yeah? Literally moving that quickly. Off and, yeah, well, I mean, we've got to be that quick. Can I just say, we haven't served anyone yet. You know that. We're just trying to get the timings right. So it's yeah, double. but it's just, it's just a little bit of thought, Kerry. Okay. I started you off slowly, and then it all went a little bit pear-shaped. 
creme fraiche, chives, whisk in. Right. Even now, the scrambled egg is still yeah. cooking. Yeah, that's right. Just remember one thing, this is not fucking breakfast in bed. These diners are paying for this food, do you understand? So it has to be fucking delicious. Right, spoon. You might think scrambled egg is just for breakfast, but combined with luxurious wild mushrooms, it makes a great starter. Garlic out, goodbye to the garlic, and then just scatter them around. Clean the plates, please. OK. Right, ladies, are we happy with that? Yeah. New start? Yeah. yeah. Yes. A bit of composure. Yeah. Hello? And we communicate to one another, OK? Yes, Gordon. Yeah? Right, Kerry, yes. Nicola, let's yes. go, yeah? OK. OK. Right, Nicola. Something's burning. What's going on? Oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking hell. Hey, right, ladies. Hey, ladies. Oh, fuck me. Gordon? Yes, John Baptiste. People are complaining about the, the smell of the burn in the restaurant. What can I do? No, I don't know. I, I tell open you. the window or open the door. Do something. Fucking use your brain. I'm not interested in blaming or anything. I look, we're fucking kitchen caked in smoke. We fucking wasted over 200 eggs and fucking have been served. Next on the menu, I tried to work out which side Darren Goff bats for in the recipe challenge. So you like dancing, you've got two earrings, you've got a pink t shirt, you play a girl's game. Anything you want to tell me? Hugh Furley Whittingstall sees trouble ahead in my back garden. They seem really quite locked on to the idea that these pigs are here eventually to be eaten. And to be honest, it's Gordon I'm worried about. And will the brigade ever get the starter served to a hungry and restless dining room? I'm excited about scrambled eggs, but right now I'm fucking <laughs> shitting myself. You know that? So it's like a fucking war zone. Wouldn't we'll be so bad if we we're fucking cooking something complicated. Wait, scrambled please. eggs! <laughs> Sorry about the delay, we're a little bit in the fucking caca, yeah? I mean, beyond belief. This is just turning out to be a fucking disaster, you know? I'm excited about scrambled eggs, but right now I'm fucking shitting myself, you know that? This is not scrambled eggs, this is a fucking... So I know they've been waiting for fucking ages, hey? It's like a fucking war zone, wouldn't be so bad if we're fucking cooking something complicated. Scrambled eggs! What can I say, man? It's been an hour and a half since the diner sat down, and two-thirds of the dining room are still to be served their scrambled egg with wild mushrooms. I'm fed up. I'm thinking I fancy going down the pub. We've been waiting too long. Come on, please. On order, ladies, listen. Four covers, table two. Four scrambled egg, four black bree, four sabion. No answer. Yes, Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Oh, ladies. Right. Hello, Nicola. Yeah, You're part of the team. It'd yeah. be nice if you could answer. I'll call it out again. None of us listening again. Is he just all switched off? I'm ready now. On order, four covers, table two. Could you just talk a little bit less so Sorry, when I call okay. over you. But you're not listening to I me. Am. I'm, I'm trying to pull to out an order, but your conversation is far more important. On order, four covers, table two, four scrambled egg, four black bream, four sabion. Yes, Gordon. Thank yes, Gordon. you. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's go. Nice clean plates. Yeah, all the way around. Same way. Gentle, gentle. Sorry. Watch your tickets. That's it. We're in a kitchen now. Yeah, yeah. We're not in your fucking shit hot, immaculate little kitchen at home in Chelsea. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Tonight's brigade nominated themselves to work in my kitchen because they believe they're great cooks who've got what it takes. Okay. Really up, really high. Yeah. 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 Very. Put the spoon down and, and, and put the plate up. Let's go. Good. That's it. It was a nice texture, it wasn't too dry, had a nice flavour, and it was seasoned properly. I would have eaten my dog's leg, I was that hungry. Uh, good evening, apparently you weren't happy with the scrambled eggs. Do you like your scrambled eggs firm? I really like them firm. Now, the scrambled eggs are never meant to be firm. That's called an omelette, sweetheart. The scrambled eggs are served slightly runny. Omelette's oh, a bit better, they had no flavour. I tasted really those bad. scrambled eggs. I seasoned those scrambled eggs. What did you eat before you um, tasted these scrambled eggs? You must have eaten something else, because that was bland. There was no flavour in that. You can do better than that. I can see quite clearly you're a lady who likes her food. <laughs> right, I want some food. Unfortunately, you've got a fucking bland palate. <laughs> Fuck me. I've got the result for the staff. Yes. Right, ladies, hello, excuse me. Let's go. Okay, so out of 50 diners tonight, 50 diners, we've got 33 people who are not paying. Why? Because they're not happy with the food. Is it the time they waited or is it? Time is the way it's been cooked. They don't want to pay. No, no, I'm not fucking around now. Now you've got to really seriously pull it back up. Let's make it back. Yeah, and let's win them back with a main course. Okay. Yes? Yes. Yeah? Let's go. Okay. Before I get these girls on the main course, God help me, here's what happened when I tried to get Jeremy Clarkson in the kitchen to cook Sunday lunch. 
I'm here in the Isle of Man to find out what first attracted the multi-millionaire gobshite to this offshore tax haven. Well, some people, when you like, do you know the really amazing thing about the Isle of Man? You're allowed, by law, to shoot a Scotsman if he's within 20 feet of the beach. And to get him out of the car and into the kitchen to cook Sunday lunch for his wife, Francie, and his three kids. Mm, sorry, late. What a nightmare. Hi. First stop, his decidedly penis-shaped house. Anything. My yes. job on a Sunday sure. is to eat lunch sure. at the head of the table, yeah. smoke 500 hey. cigarettes and watch a Grand Prix. And surely he drives you to school in the quickest... No, no. 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 He's, He's never driven me to school. He doesn't know the way to school. Uh, <laughs> that's extraordinary. <laughs> I got my income tax this morning. Yeah, um, Isle of Man's not exactly famed for its cuisine. No, Can food we... here is fuel. 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 We're going to change that today and do something quite vibrant, exciting with yeah. lobsters. Yeah. Poached lobster, just done plainly. Beautiful watercress salad, potatoes, and we're going to make an aioli. <laughs> That's the thing around a nipple. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not sure I want to eat somebody's aioli. <laughs> no, 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 it's a garlic saffron mayonnaise. Now, you're more confident we're going to get a lobster for lunch. Quietly confident. Yeah? Yeah, always get one. Yeah? Might be very big, but you always get one, at least, yeah. And I put the pots in a couple of days ago. Now, this is what we're going in. The Isle of Man may not be a culinary hotspot, but one thing there is plenty of is lobster. Right, guys, Gordon's got it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, look, a lobster. A lobster's in there, look. He's too small. Everything else in Clarkson's life might be huge, but his lobsters are disappointingly small. Jack, come here, look. No Sunday lunch on this performance. <laughs> look, right, say goodbye. He oh, is... Yeah, but the it doesn't matter because we can just get a boat and go out there. We'll be fine, honestly. Yeah. Trust me. Lunch is out there. It's just okay. we're finding it. And like Clarkson, who couldn't catch a cold, real Manx fishermen catch around 30 tons of lobster a year, which is worth £300,000 to the island's fishing industry. Fortunately, Clarkson knows such a man. Is this your boat? <laughs> Do you know what it isn't? What's that smell here? Stinks. Mackerel. Yeah, I feel a bit sick right now, to be honest. <laughs> huh? Gordon gets seasick going over a speed bump. Christ the man from I... Wandsworth. <laughs> the salty <laughs> sea dog. <laughs> nice. Great condition and vibrant as well. They're very strong, aren't they? Huh? Christ almighty. Yeah? Well, that wasn't bad, was it? No. Huh? That's, a good, that's a good haul. Quick, have a look. Now, look at these. They got, listen, they've got elastic bands. Of course they're real. There you go, look. They're, they're, they're just, see? Go and have a look in the rock pools, OK? And we'll get these cooked, yes? Lobster contains more meat per pound than any other shellfish, so it's great for Sunday lunch. So we're just going to boil them very, very plainly. How um, long are you going to do it for? About six, seven minutes per lobster. Do you put vinegar in there? Um, this is sweet. The lobster on its own is just, you know, delicious, and it doesn't really need much enhancement. That instantly kills them. Yeah. And just for sort of what, humane... What, putting them in boiling water is what? Slow and agonising uh, no, in some the, ways? No, but they're dead by then. Well, if you want to waste time stabbing it in the head, <laughs> you go right ahead. Will you separate three egg yolks for me? Yeah. yeah. And I'll show you how to make the perfect aioli. Have you seen our eggs? These are our chicken. They're called Cotswold leg bars or something or other, and they lay blue eggs. <laughs> and then we've got those that lay brown ones. That's David Beckham. That's Sol Campbell and Paul Scholes. And Rooney? No, because they were named before Rooney, and anyway, we don't have a chicken that stupid. <laughs> and did you want it separating from the shell as well? To make aioli, put the yolks in a blender with garlic, saffron, mustard, lemon juice and olive oil. And blitz. There we go. How do you stop it curdling? A tablespoon of cold water. If it curdles, straight away. Oh, straight really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to put that much in there. <laughs> You've got your cat's arsehole on. <laughs> I... <laughs> mm, that's <laughs> yummy. It smells amazing. Huh? So fresh. It is one of the great foods, this, I think. This and crab. And see that little line there? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to taste it. That's his shit sack. 
You never eat that. That's... I've never taken <laughs> that out! <laughs> That, that, unfortunately... I've <laughs> eaten that so many times! And you know when you think, like, you come across a piece of spinach, you think, Christ, it's a little bit gritty. Yeah, yeah. you've just gone through the shit sack. <laughs> right, I've got to get the crap out of these ones now. I am going to do this on my own. Stuff that until just ten minutes ago I'd have gladly eaten. Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> is full of shit. Yes, he is! I am full of shit. <laughs> Wouldn't it just... If you run them under a tap, does that knacker the flavour? Yeah, never. Never, never. The worst thing you can ever do is a lobster run under a tap. Yeah. So, when something as simple and as delicious as this, you don't need anything complicated, do you? No. Poached lobster, a really nice salad of watercress, new potatoes. And that's what really upsets me when you see chefs the way they overcomplicate a lobster. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Okay, Matilda. Fairly small amount is what I suggest. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for Thank alerting you. me to the fact that we've been eating lobster food. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? I've just got Jeremy Clarkson to help me cook Sunday lunch for 11. It doesn't have to be stressful, does it? It's not stressful to just sit down on Sunday lunch. Yeah. And they love it. Katia, up now. OK. And eat. <laughs> no, not stressful at all. Finlow's. There's no element <laughs> of stress because you haven't got Katia in your family. <laughs> Now's the time to draw back the respect of the dining room and make up for the shit that we created with the scrambled eggs. Okay. okay? Let's go. Four bream away. Four bream away. Yes, chef. One. Let's take how long for your first? One and a half minutes. One minute. and a half. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Now you're starting to look like cooks now. Confident. Sorry. And Nicola, the stove's clean. Keep it up. The next challenge for my amateur brigade, yes, is the main course. Steamed sea bream on a bed of petit pois bon femme. Black bream. This has to be a bit of a chef's secret. Delicate, sweet, amazing flavour. They taste phenomenal. Fill it all the way down. Just cut from the tail and let the knife run all the way up to the top of the head. And then just come off. It's dainty, delicate, and it tastes fantastic. Bone. Run upstairs and nick your wife's little tweezers. And these are perfect for pulling out the bones. Score. Clean film. Really nice, fragrant basil leaves. Salt, pepper, olive oil. And place the bream on top of the basil. Wrapping something, lift that one as it keeps all that flavour in there. And look. You've got a beautiful little parcel, and now that's ready to start poaching in lightly boiling water for eight to ten minutes. Hot pan, olive oil, baby onions. Quite chunky. Streaky bacon. Into the onions, roll it over. You think of the flavour, the sweetness of the fish, and the bacon and onion, how well that goes together. Fresh thyme. Peas. Don't be scared of using frozen peas. The peas just give it that real nice summery freshness. Absolutely delicious. Season. This is so simple. Peas, onions and bacon. The smell of the bacon and onion. Beautiful. Fish slice in, under the fish, and just lift it up. Look at it. The quality of that bream is extraordinary. And these basil leaves, a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Mmm, fucking hell. Black bream with peas, bomb fam, done. <laughs> one put the onions on, one does the bream. Come on. We've got to work as a team now. Let's go. How long for you, Kerry? Uh, three minutes. Right, Kerry, look up there. Yeah. And have, a, have an insurance policy. Use the timer, but also time yourself, yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five more bream in. Now we're going to start doing two tables at once. That's it. Right. right. Bring the water up to the boil and five in. You don't need to unwrap the fish to tell it's done. Just press it. If it's firm to the touch, it's ready. The fish is really thin, so it's not going to take that long to cook. And provided we don't boil it rapidly, and we leave it ticking over, simmering, it beautifully steams and poaches at the same time. 
I'm trying to get one table moving after the other. Fine. Okay. Kerry. That's fine. That's not even. It's a bit not a dinner party. party. It's okay. a restaurant. I can't just think about one fucking table. Let's go. Nicola and Kerry, don't put your peas in until you're ready for them. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you put them in too early. Go on, throw them away. That's it. Right. Kate, how long before we start plating up? About 10 seconds. Thank you. 10 seconds. Good. Come on, let's go then. Peas and mushrooms the on the plate. Oh yeah? Okay, skin side up. No. Okay, no. Like... So, look, listen to me. The belly's at the bottom. Okay. Silver okay. at the bottom. That's the top. Okay, Good. Right, like... Nice and gently. Come on. Plate. Down, Kate. Wipe the plate. Service, please. Evening. All the same way up, please, yeah? All the same way up. Come on. Sorry. Right, that's your first table out, ladies, yes? Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's go. Four. Four. Have you tasted the peas? I didn't yes. see any of you tasting. No, we didn't. No, no. no, we didn't. Nicola, what you experience is what the customer experience. No, Take the peas and tell me you're happy with them. Come on, They're ladies. I taught you to taste the scrambled eggs. What your experience is what they're experiencing. Absolutely. I don't want Absolutely. fucking 33 customers refusing to pay for the main course. Yes? The peas might be slightly overcooked. Can you check them for me? I, I think can them, just... I think I, look, 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 yeah, look, 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 Just looking at them, yeah, the are. peas are fucked. They Come are. on, ladies. Start again, yeah? Come on. Five. Come on, please, five. Kerry. Yeah, are the five ready? Because we'll go, we'll go straight for the five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And put our four more running now. These are the five. The, the, the other four that we wasted. Are four more in? Yes. Yes. Where? No, there's five from before. I'll put four in one oh, now. No, it's fine. I'll do it now. The fish was lovely. The texture of the fish, the taste of the fish is very nice. I would prefer it to have been crispier. I mean, it was a bit slimy. It was actually just very well cooked and brought out the real flavours of the food itself. Right, give me the results. Hopefully, okay. with some fucking good news for the main course. Okay. Come on, come on. Okay, it's not that good, Gordon. 30, oh, 30 people are not paying for the for the bream. 30? Yeah. That's over half the dining room not paying for the main course. Yeah, I know. What do yeah. they say? Uh, they've been waiting too long. And they, that I can uh, understand. What about the flavour? They, they find the, um, the bream a little bit watery. It's poached, for fuck's sake. It's wrapped in clinton. It's a very subtle flavour. Unbelievable. So that's 33 people not paying for the starter, 30 not paying for the main course, I want all those 50 customers paying for the dessert, yeah? Pull it back and let's get it together. Start clearing down, uh, ladies, yeah? Let's go yeah. and get ready for the dessert, yes? Okay. Next on the menu, Darren Goff balls me a googling the recipe challenge. If we did ballroom... Ballroom. Well, you can be my bitch. Cool, fucking hell, hold on. <laughs> and Janet Street Porter finds a new diet superfood. Push your fist, make another fist, oh, and push down... Oh, no, I can't, I can hear his heart beating! Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> There's no heartbeat there. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, I've never met a Yorkshireman that can cook, and I don't think Darren Goff is going to change my mind. Ready? Ready. Good luck. Let's go. So whoever the recipe challenger is, they get to choose exactly what dish they want to do. And Darren's decided on cooking a cod dish. So what's the secret behind the dish? Well, the reason I'm doing this one is because I don't normally... I don't like fish, believe it or not. Really? And this dish, when I had it for the first time... Yeah. ..actually enjoyed it. With such an amazing fast right arm, I've never seen a fucking potato be peeled so slow in all my life. Well, I'm doing it left-handed to give you a chance. OK. And what else is in there, Dan? Baked cod with what else? Well, I've huh? got garlic in this, a little bit of chilli. I've got onion in it, potatoes. So mine is a cod Provencal with some really nice clams. The first thing, of course, the important thing, is to cook our clams. A touch of nolly fry. And then... <laughs> lid on. Cook them quickly so they steam very, very quickly and then take them out and turn them into a colander. When they first asked you to do Strictly Come Dancing, were you a little bit nervous? Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was great fun. And they paid a fucking shitload of money. <laughs> yeah, and they raised a lot of money for charity, which was the Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> what was your dance partner like? Lilia. Lilia was very good, yeah. She's, um... Did you feed her your cod dish? <laughs> I don't think the husband would have been too happy. What could you teach me in one minute how to dance? If I put you on the spot now, one minute. Just, oh, oh. just, just a move. Um, if we did ballroom. Ballroom. Well, you can be my bitch. Cool, fucking hell, hold on a minute. Back? Yep. 
and across, <laughs> two, three. Now back with the other leg. Hold on, one. Let me be the man, you be the woman. All right, so you come with your right leg first. In the groin. Two, three. Why are you stepping on your tiptoes? toes? Because that's waltz. Oh, is it waltz? We did a waltz. So for the proper cell, I've got the garlic, the onions, the red peppers, the yellow peppers, just sweating down nice and slowly, getting really nice and sweet. Then I'm going to reduce the clam stock down. That clam stock will be the base of the sauce. Touch of cream, bring it back up to the ball, and then just drop some really nice sort of basil leaves in there. Are you all right, right over there, big man? I'm doing well at the minute. Yeah. So you like dancing. Yeah. You've got two earrings, you've got a pink T-shirt, you play a girl's game. Anything you want to tell me? It's what I've called, and I'm quite comfortable with it. Metrosexual. Problem out is going to go at the bottom of the dish. Cod on top. Right, I'm going to come over and now, find out what the fuck you're doing. It's um, a very simple dish. Where does the flavour come from, in terms of, you know, Well, it's... when you taste it, you'll realise. Yeah? Do I have to taste it? Well, I'd, I'd like to think you'd taste it. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish off my cod with a sauce. We've got our breadcrumbs, and we just top the cod with the breadcrumbs. And then finally, just before they go in, we get some really nice aged parmigiano and just great parmesan over the top. Right, big man, I'm ready. Not be long, mate. How long? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? <laughs> uh, give me a quick run through, what's in there? Well, I put a little bit of chilli in, half a chilli, uh, not too much, some breadcrumbs, uh, I put a squat of parmesan now, uh, then the tomato sauce on top, and then put it in. There you go, mate. Job done. If that pile of shit fucking beats that, yeah, I swear to God, there's something wrong with their fucking taste buds. You know that? OK, good luck. Let's get it in the other, shall we? Yeah? Keep yours fucking miles apart from mine. Here we go, big boy. Yeah? OK, I'll put mine on the top. You put yours on the bottom. Good man. OK, well done. Right, dessert. We've got this wonderful citrus fruit with a champagne savion. I'm going to whip up the egg yolks, yeah? Over a bain marie, touch of champagne in there, yeah? About three tablespoons per portion, and then just whisk away. Now, once you've combined the egg yolks, sugar and champagne, you have to beat vigorously for ten minutes. If it gets too thick, then just add a drop more champagne. Can you right. over-champagne it? Um, depends how much you like alcohol. <laughs> yeah? A lot tonight. A lot tonight. <laughs> I think tonight we should put a lot of alcohol in here, <laughs> so we can fucking dummyfy our customers to pay for fucking dinner. Ten minutes sounds like a long time, but it gives a fantastic consistency to the sabillon. Oranges just go into quarters. Yeah? Yeah. OK. And the idea now is to create a really nice sort of circle. Star. Yeah. Look at them. Beautiful. You know, we started off with such a fucking hard time with scrambled eggs. Now we're going to finish on a high and make sure every one of those customers pay the fucking bill. And look at that consistency. Oh, that's Blue torch. Nice. That looks nice than it did before. Yeah. So be very, very careful. OK? And it's got to be brown, but not burnt, yeah? Yeah. Look, Just keep, the, keep it moving. Yeah. But make sure the savion is not too thin, because if it's too thin, it won't glaze the fruit. Right. OK? What I want to see this time yeah. is communication. OK. I'll start putting the fruit on, you start whipping. OK. Yeah? Last week, foodie gobshite Janet Street Porter was in my kitchen banging on about low-fat food. She's convinced the future is low-fat. I think it's bollocks. She's clearly on a mission to prove me wrong. Unlike Gold Top Gordon, I like to watch what I eat, which often means a diet of salad, salad, salad or boring old chicken. But I've been told there's another meat out there that's even lower in fat. Hello. Auntie Janet brought some food. No! Don't no! fight! Form an orderly queue. Manners, please! Goats! Do you know that goats have got less fat than chicken, lamb or beef? So instead of eating chicken, 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 I could have been eating goat. I've missed a trick here. Goats look scrawny enough, but I am a bit sceptical that any red meat can be that low fat. Well, I guess the only way you can really find out is to slaughter it and have a look at what goes on underneath that shaggy coat. So I'm on my way to an abattoir. I 
get all the best jobs. And I'm going to be involved in butchering a goat. I'll just have to um, think of who it reminds me of as I'm plunging the knife in. It weighs a okay. ton! I know. Oh! Oh, oh, okay. oh, no, I don't want to. Oh, no, 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 no. Have you got a bit of plastic that I can put over that thing's head? <laughs> right, hang on a minute. Make a fist, push your fist, make another fist, oh, no. and push down. Oh no, I can't, I can hear his heart beating! Oh no! Oh. There's no heartbeat there. Pull it nice and hard. Get on with that. OK. Come back here. No, I don't You're not getting away with that easy, come no, on. I don't want to know about that stomach. <laughs> can we go and butcher this so that I can have some meat um, that I can actually eat? We certainly can, yep. Right. There you have it. That lamb, it's got so much fat on yeah. it. On the yeah. leg as well, which you never really think of as a fatty part of That's right. the meat. So the goat's it. legs are much smaller. They're much smaller. And They're the not... amount of fat is incredibly less, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The fat is stored in a goat around the kidneys. This is where most of the fat content is. So when you're it's butchering it, it's easy to take this fat out, and then when you're cutting the meat up, you're left with meat that does not have the fat running through That's right. the meat That's like right. you do yep. you get on the lamb. Well, the only time I've ever eaten goat, to be honest, has been in West India and cooking, but I've always eaten curried goat, and as a result, I've never regarded goat as anything that you can lose weight by eating. In fact, the last time I had curried goat, I had to lie down on the carpet to get over it, because I had carb overload. <laughs> I want a healthy recipe for cooking goat, so I've asked my mate Harry to help me out. He's a chef at the Anchor and Hope pub in South London, where goat is a regular on the menu. You said it's stronger than lamb. How, what would you say the taste was like? A bit goaty. Goaty? Well, <laughs> look, I know you're a chef and that words aren't your forte. Uh, what do you mean goaty? It's so, tasty. Tasty, but goaty. <laughs> what do people say in your restaurant after they've eaten it for the first time? They love it, I think. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a tree, it's unusual. And I think generally things are unusual in, in Britain. Generally, they've been farmed better. Just give me a rundown of possible recipe. I'm going to suggest pot roasting with uh, just a few root veg. Stewing gets all the fat out, it will lubricate it while it's cooking, and then you can take that off where you eat. And it'll make it tender. That's it, it's going to be so easy. All you do is brown the meat, add the chopped veg, the white wine, cover with foil, and slow roast until tender. Look at that meat, it's so soft, it's unbelievable. Mmm! Oh, it tastes really good. What I'm going to do is take it to a group of people who are watching uh, what they eat, and I'm going to try and convince them that this is very, very good for you. Sit down that way. Super! your meeting, <laughs> have any of you ever eaten goat? No. no. I've been finishing a book and I've been sitting at the typewriter, well, sitting at the computer for months and my arse has gone to <laughs> twice the size. <laughs> so, um, I've been trying to find food that I can eat that's not chicken, 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 mm. chicken. It's boring, isn't it? So, who's willing to try it? I will try. You're all going to try it because you basically want to eat food, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put some of this veg in. Very nice. <laughs> what do you say? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, very nice. Very tender. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you would have given me this, I would have said it was lamb, but you didn't tell me what it was. Yeah, yeah. Row two, I've got a vegetarian. Well, that had to happen. That's <laughs> no, all right. Could you tell yeah. what it was? No, I thought it was lamb. You thought it was lamb. Yeah. What did you think? It's ever so nice. It wasn't as fatty as lamb. It, sm it yeah, looks no, and no, smelled no. and tasty, but I find lamb ever so fatty. Judging by my sample audience tonight, it seems to have gone down really well. And you know what? I'm all for it because anything that broadens a careful diet when you're trying to keep your thighs from looking like bridge supports is fine by me.
So this is roast goat. It's been slow roasted, so it hasn't oh, braised. dried out. Oh, braised. Now, what do you think? Very, very good. Very, um, the texture's quite... It's tender, isn't it? It's quite tender. Now you're eating it. What do you think? I think it's actually tastier than I'd have expected. If you serve that on a Sunday roast, uh, you, people would think it was that. Service, table seven and table six, please, yes? Okay. Gordon, I know you're really busy. Don't you worry. Can I um, offer you a piece of goat? Yeah. yeah. It's delicious. So, isn't it? It's fucking delicious. It's slightly yeah. gamey, no? Yeah. It's like lamb, yeah. but lamb that's had a more interesting life. Mm. Mm. Well, the flavour's extraordinary. It's really um, good. How would you cook it? It's so braising like that, or roasting. Yeah. Um, I'm fed up with seeing goat in a curry because I think it's a lot more flavoursome without having to... I know thought also the curry takes away from the flavour of the meat itself. No, Do you right. think the people in your restaurants would eat goat? Yeah. 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 I think they would. I'll tell you what, though. I wish the fuck you were in here this evening, you know that. Uh, I know. All yeah. I know is I've waited for my food. How long did you wait for the starter? Truthfully. How long does it take for paint to dry? Serious. And if you were in a restaurant... Outside the F word, what would you have done in a restaurant that kept you waiting that long for fucking scrambled eggs on toast? I walked out. Restaurant? You walked out. Yeah, walked out. And basically, scrambled egg isn't very hard. Don't look at me like that with poison. Look. I, it wasn't a poison egg. Um, I was just listening to you. I could eat scrambled egg. Yeah, right, right. I mean, I might. Don't beat them up. They're fine. I promise you now, we're getting there. We're pulling it back. But, that is very nice. Okay, yes. Okay. Good. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. That's nice. Back on there again. Touch more champagne. It's getting a little bit too thick. There you go. Up. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Don't stop. Good. That's it. Excellent. There you go. Try and keep it in the pan. Up. Service, please. Not too far out. Nice. Keep it in the centre, but be accurate when you put it on there. It's really important clean to clean the, the pan. Absolutely. Because you're going to glaze shit on there, yeah? Come on. That's it. Round. Nicely, 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 nicely. Come on. Come on, ladies, let's go. Hey, Start blow torching, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It's really important you don't get the drips around the plate before you start glazing, Rebecca. Yes, come on, ladies. Good. Clean the plates before you glaze. <laughs> Kerry, we put that blow torch down because you're going to set us all on fire or your fucking hair on fire. You rest a une table de quatre, c'est ça, non? Allô, Jean-Baptiste, one table four left. Got that. We've got that. We've got that. Three. This is it. Yeah. Finished. Yeah. Oh my god. Hell. That would never end. Table three, yes. yes. Let's go. Go, please. Let's go. Let's go. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. It's more fine. Clear down, yes. And then we'll find out uh, who's paying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And who's not paying. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> now, time for the big fat Yorkshireman to face the music. <laughs> Chunky monkey. Ladies first. Yeah. I think it's perfectly seasoned. I love it. It's beautiful. Mm. No, I really like the fish, but it could have been a lot more flavour. Mm. Yeah, like yeah, I think some sort of spice or something to get that. That looks like a bit of bacon on the top, but it's not. It's melted <laughs> <What is that>? cheese <laughs> with tomato puree or something. Yeah. The potatoes are very hard. I don't know. Yeah, far too hard. You couldn't even mash those potatoes. No. Okay, JP. Okay. Guys. Now, don't look at me like that. When you've got those little fucking sad <laughs> French puppy eyes on, yeah? No, nothing sad, actually. Fuck off, OK? Interesting comments. Um, but uh, one dish is better than the other one. Of course one dish is better than the other one. Yes. And the one they prefer is... Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey. Never mind. Desolé. About fucking time. Bravo. You know that? What a big boy. Well yeah. done. Thank you. Yours, um, look, yours you. look good, I'll give you that. Okay. Yours yeah. look good. <laughs> now fuck off out the kitchen now, yes? I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Uh, yes! Next on the menu, Jack and I have a bit of a disagreement about the pigs. <laughs> I want you to start understanding that they're here yeah. because we're going to eat them, yeah. not because they're becoming our best mates. Yes. And the brigade get the long-awaited results for dessert. Give me some good news for the desserts, please. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to turn my pigs into a spectacular main course for the restaurant. But these little porkers deserve to live a little bit first. Waking up. Yeah. 
Our eyes are closed. A whole apple just for you. <laughs> um, I think Jack is starting to become a little bit sort of smitten. Back. Look at his cheeks, Jack. His cheeks. There you go, man. The kids have, you know, pretty much, you know, fallen in love with them. Jack was snuggling up with them the other day inside the pen. I came home last night from work and sat in there and fed them an apple. So, um, you know, we're becoming very familiar with them. Jack, are you getting attached to these pigs? Uh, yes. Do you like them? Yeah. Right, listen. Yeah. Listen, we've got to look after them. Yeah. Okay, but I don't want you falling in love with them. No, no, but you're caring for them in a way that you're you're getting attached. Do you want to sleep yeah, with them? Pets. No, mate, they're not pets. The best thing about having pigs yeah. is uh, when they grow up, um, we can ride them. Oh. <laughs> I want you to start understanding that they're here yeah. because we're going to eat them, yeah. not because they're becoming our best mates. Yeah. With just five weeks to slaughter day, I'm really concerned the kids are getting too attached. So I've asked Hugh Furley Whittingstall for his expert advice. They're very nice pigs, aren't they? Hello. Hello. Beautiful. Hello. Can we have a scratch? That's. Where's um, the other one? Uh, that's Trini, and this is Susanna. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I told you not to name them. <laughs> I didn't know, I know. I, 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 that, that's my own personal names, but right. the kids have sort the kids of have got other names. Well, it's a bangers and mash, bacon and egg, and it's like, oh god. But what do the kids think is happening here? Do they think they've got two new pets, or do they think they've got some very interesting dinner coming in a few months' time? The girls have started to sort of come to terms with eating them, but Jack is slightly more... Thick. More sentimental yeah, about them. Yeah, very sentimental, and he's, like, laying down in their bed and... Giving them cuddles. Giving them cuddles, because they cuddle all the time. I think it's important that they don't lose this connection between pigs and meat, and the reason they're here is for food. I mean, do you, do you talk to them about the different parts of the pig and, you know, what's going to be used for what? You, you know, if you refer to the back legs as hams... Yep. Rather than legs, legs they yeah. are the hams. The hams is a good idea. And the loin. We're going Let's to get go. the pigs. To mark out where the cuts of meat are on the pigs, the pigs we're going to use tape. Let's divide up like the butcher's cuts. Yeah. And we've got a ham. There's a ham. Right. Between the loin and the hand. But getting a pig to stand still isn't that simple. <laughs> That's an interesting cut. <laughs> what is <laughs> it? Look, <laughs> look, look. Susanna's not very happy having tape on her, is she? Um, but why did we need the tape? Because we're trying to think of cuts. They're not called legs anymore. They're called hams. Here you go. OK. You mean the ham you eat? That's right, the ham you eat, of course. We're going to do right. it on your daddy instead. Ready? <laughs> so, right. right. OK. Then, see? That's the ham. That's the shoulder. That's where the streaky bacon comes from. That's called the hand. OK, where's your daddy's streaky bacon coming from? Yeah. Underneath, yeah. underneath. Yeah. Now, where's his snout? Where? Yeah. Where? <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got it now. We understand that cuts, yes? Yeah. The lesson's paid uh, off. Jack is now thinking about his stomach. Typical oh, Ramsay. Clothes, yeah, they've got to grow big so then we'll get more sausages and bacon and... <laughs> they seem really quite locked on to the idea that these pigs are here eventually to be eaten. And to be honest, it's Gordon I'm worried about. Give him, give him a little scratch on the belly. Good morning, girls. Hey. Come on. Hey. It's bloody tough having them in the garden, known full yeah. well that their days are numbered. Well, the first but... pigs I had at River Cottage, and I had two pigs like that, sent them both to slaughter at the same time. Really? And it was very emotional. You know, I, I yeah. was on the verge of tears. The minute I saw them, I did fall in love with them. There's no two ways about that. I'm enjoying the moment, but I don't know if I'm looking forward to the slaughter, to be honest, because um, they're quite fun to have around. You could taste the champagne. It was still light. It was nice and smoky where it had been kind of burnt on top. It was lovely. The sauce on top was gorgeous with that little torch effect. I love it when they burn it a little bit. Gorgeous. So I would sum it up as disappointing. An upscale version of tinned fruit with bird's custard. OK, JB, give me some good news for the desserts, please. 41 people landed pink for the desserts. 41? Yes. Why so many? Uh, once again, waiting time. 
and some people were expecting something a bit more elaborate. The time issue, I can understand. Yeah, definitely. Simple and delicious. I mean, it was just straightforward, uncomplicated, and fucking simple. Ladies, to be honest, the amount of time you kept them waiting for the starters was a joke. Yes, we got a little bit faster in the main course, but they shouldn't wait for something so simple. Scrambled eggs on toast, that's what it was, with fried mushrooms. Not good, not good enough. So starters, 33 customers wouldn't pay for them. 30 customers wouldn't pay for the main course. And 41 customers wouldn't pay for the fucking dessert. So in total, there's 104 plates weren't paid for. That means only 46 plates across the board were paid for tonight. We went to Hell and Back and we had a roller coaster up and down. It was a fucking struggle. And I'm telling you now, you're not coming back. We don't want to. We're not. You can pay us to come back.